When? To whom? Come Sunday. To Master Kirby. To George? Thinks thou this wise? Wise and favourable to me. But to us? No, not to us. Wouldst thou have wed me? Wouldst thou have bidden me, John? I must absent me from thy bed and thy embrace. My husband ne'er shall grow a cuckold to haunts. I am resolved in this. Life in the heart or self-delusion? Happy to part or dark despair? Right at the start but wrong conclusion? Can we ever really know the time to stay? The time to go? The long for yes, the long feared no? The sweetest gift before the harshest blow? John, I prithee drink and wish us joy, as I wish joy to thee. And thy music hath been muse to all mine own. Not thy muse, George. A fellow worshipper, our passion shared. Unto ye both I wish all earthly joy. Oh, I'm sure she will inspire in thee most heavenly harmony. Sir Robert, here is my music made flesh. Master Wilby, your duty to Sir Robert and Lady German. We've had the honour of hearing Master Wilby make music at Rushbrook with our own Master Kirby. The honour was indeed mine, Sir Robert. Lady Kitson and I are both fortunate to have ensnared such musicians. Master Wilby and I the more fortunate, I venture. The right of love, the right of love, the right of love is ours to share. But when you part, the hardest part, you only part of Now 
does uh, Thomas return from London? When his petition to the Queen hath quite expunged all rumours of our recusancy, there is, I think, no such blot on your escutcheon. We all strive to serve both our God and our Queen, as a wife will strive to serve her husband. Austin Friars and Hengrave are both home in equal measure. It is a wife's duty to see to the home. And her pleasure not to prolong her duty. And thy urgent duty is to persuade the Queen of our loyalty to her church. And your pleasure doubtless in the stews of Shoreditch. And art thou loyal, madam? Thou who hast the mass said in Latin each Sunday. And would have it sung if I could dare. In private, sir, as I would have thee be private when seeking solace to beguile thy London nights. And now the accommodation. We have for some long while held in respect each other's needs, wheresoever they lie. I must needs be in London a while, and I ask only that if thine eyes should fix on someone, thou be discreet, and never play the wanton.
means to part your will is To thy duties, with my thanks. We shall enjoy more and with good company when Master will be desireth. Thank you. So, Master will be. John, your gift grows daily greater. My lady speaks kindly. My gift is hers to enjoy. All thy gifts are mine to enjoy, are they not? I know not the words. Better words as thoughts and thoughts as music. Better. Safer. Safer. You are safe here, John. For music is my one true love. Edward Johnson here at Hengrave before thee, George Kirby at Rushbrook, William Byrd at Appleton. For genius, though found in service due, is duly treasured by those whom genius serves. Our patrons oft display their genius too. Perhaps a little, but music, painting, writing are not mere fripperies. Their nourishment is to our great houses a great duty. And one which your ladyship doth discharge in no small measure, for which I give daily thanks. I thank thee, John, for that. For all. Burning me to death, 
but his mercy Art thou at prayer, John? More a thought than prayer. Thoughts seem lead to the house of God. This house of God is safe enough? Its stone is safe, no doubt. No longer doth that stone afford a haven for its soul. No rude, no screen. The vestments rent in twain, the candles rude and mean. Well, thou knowest, my lady, the Church of England is not the scarlet whore of Rome. And well thou knowest where my allegiance liest. Doth thy soul not hunger to set the Latin mass? I fear I have not the skill, nor indeed the cause. My wishes could furnish thy cause. Wishes can be orders, and I would fear the consequence. Fear? Thou knowest of William Byrd. I venerate his name. As doth the Queen, who chooseth not to heed his Latin at polyphony, with which they celebrate the mass at Ingotston. A requisite may thrive while he finds favour at the court, but there are those about the Queen that would destroy him. I trow his genius will suffice to protect him. As thine would protect thee. Think on it, John. It's a tender favour to me. Just another tender favour, such as thou so much desirest. Madam, your husband. He is not yet abroad, and in sooth he doth not bend the knee betimes except I bid him. But if thou wilt. The Lady Elizabeth is at her devotions and will not be disturbed. Oh, thy music has such wondrous passion. Were it not me to offer it in service to thy God? My music striveth to inspire a passion less than kin to that engendered by thy God. I cannot serve two masters. Canst not, wouldst not, will argue that anon. But now, thou hast me here at thy advantage, John. Madam, have a care. We are in the house of God. Not my house, nor my God. Here is neither heavenly love nor divine opprobrium. Here. Is haven for thy music's earthly passions. Sweet honey, softly bees, sweet honey, softly bees. Why do you still, why do you still, why do you still serve it on roses, pinks, and violets? As if the choice as if the choice is left. Thou art summoned next Monday forenoon at the petty session in Bury. This note was brought by messenger not an hour since. Summoned. The customary accusation. Which I do earnestly beseech thee to dispatch with all respect and duty. As I am dispatched? Thou knowest full well what I endured, imprisoned as a recusant. It would go worse with thee. So I am to... Express most fervently thy devotion to the Protestant cause, and solemnly swear that the Pope hath no dominion over thee. And then? Thou wilt be pardoned. I have friends who have vouchsafed this to me. I am... We are Catholic. And criminals. In her Majesty's eyes, when she chooseth not to avert them. And thus 
thus pardoned, how shall I live? With more discretion than thou hast of late. In all matters. Let us away. Master Wilby! Your music ever delights. I thank you, Sir Thomas. Honey sucking bees. Silly sylvans. Declarations of fervent love. I hear of late you have to tend my lady. Sir, in so much as I am ever here to serve her. No matter. She's pleased with thee, which pleaseth me. But should she desire thee to forsake the secular and set a mass, perhaps in Latin, I would counsel thee to be ever mindful that the Church of England sings in English on Sundays and on every other day. You mark me? Good. Footed, misbegotten music, spawned of a droning dullard. Full well thou knowest, thy soul is not in this. The text is sacred, the sentiment is... Not fitting to glorify my lapdog, yet alone my god. Had my husband a hand in this? No. My hands alone. Then thy hands alone are guilty of a grave insult to me and to us. I bade thee humbly, and thou hast repaid me with this, this... Low music! Whate'er thy labour gained thee, Master Wilby, be sure much is lost. Stolen my sign, John. I conceive thee not good for it. Come now. Here. And here. And here. <laughs> Too much, George. An excess of smiling and sighing. Whither leadest thou? Or hath inspiration deserted thee? Have patience. The development is all. List carefully. Oh, 
this passage I award thee, John. But list now unto this cadence, of which I am most proud, the glittering of notes unto the ending. Methinks thy climax wants in ecstasy, George. Transgress a little. John, Master Cabby, I had not thought to find you here. I come to learn from Master Wilby, your ladyship. To learn from each other, George. It is good, is it not, to share our thoughts from time to time? Hey, indeed. John. Master Wilby, I am here to tell you that my daughter, the Lady Mary, will arrive tomorrow forenoon. She will doubtless rest in the afternoon, but may well enjoy some entertainment in the evening whilst her children are abed. I have a new piece in near readiness, which we will rehearse if the servants may have leave. They will be at your service. I bid you farewell, Master Kirby. Do commend me to your wife. My lady, she will be much honoured. Knowest thou the Lady Mary? She was married and had removed ere I was here. Married to whom? Lord Thomas Darcy. But now they live apart. Was there a scandal? There was rumour. Darcy is much despised, but wherefore I know not. I see. Lady Elizabeth addressed thee as John. Thou art familiar? Music hath made us playfellows. But I am ever mindful that my mistress has mastery over me, and minstrelsy must eat. We are cursed, blessed in this. Most blessed when they remain aloof, methinks. Yes. Does Anne prosper? She is passing well, and commends her to be. Not yet with child. It is a sadness to us both. We trust in the Lord and live our lives. Of late she is more melancholy than heretofore. I fear I am no comfort to her. No truer hearted husband ever loved a wife, and Anne is blessed in thee. Thank you.
Be weary from your journey. My darling. And the children. Lindell will attend thee. Master Lindell, I am very pleased to see you again. As I am right pleased to see you, Lady Mary. I, I trust you will want for nothing while you here remain. Of that I'm sure. And here is Master Wilby, of whose music making I have written to thee. I have heard and expect much, Master Wilby. We are fortunate to have a monopoly of Master Wilby's music. I am in all points your servant. My lady? More than a servant. In waywardness, if in naught else. A composer must be about safety his own voice. Else, how may we be ravished by his harmonies? Bravely spoken, father. I am all anticipation, Master Wilby, to be ravished by your harmonies. Children, come within now. As your mother bids, with good speed. and two of the players. Sir Robert's men from Rushbrook make up the rest. This feasting was put on for me. May I construe that the music too was written for my sake? Though but recently composed, I had not then the honour of knowing it would be first played for your ladyship. But now that it hath pleased me, perhaps you will be pleased to honour me with music of my own? As you command. Desire. Then shall it be. Tomorrow we will speak further on it. I am at your disposal all the morning, my lady. Then the morning shall be ours. Meantime, I pray you overread this text.
I have my tale unfolded. My lord husband has lived apart from us these seven years, divorced in all but name. Does Lord Darcy see his children? We live at Colchester, here at St. Osef, so that he may visit or remain aloof, as is his will. He is much at court, where his despised wife is assuredly his continual plaint. That is sad. Sad of far to have stayed with him. Thomas Darcy is a cruel man. His black soul condemns him to a cankered life. Could not you have wrestled his black soul and made a heaven of his hell? Forgive me, I transgress. No transgression. My mother will attest I am no saint. But the love I bear my children will not have them live upon a battlefield. We are fortunate in my father's liberality, for Darcy cares nothing for me and much for his rank and condition. And are you heart sick? In no wise. But hearts may learn to beat anew, John. There is no man who feeleth tenderness for me, no tender thought, word, or deed. Your writing hath such passion. Your words are full of the spirit of love. They bespeak more than the mere passing of years. I write, but my words are transfigured by thy music to an ache that know not if it be joy or despair. I would wish for more than despair. There is a faith, much more. But I have much to fear. From whom? Lover? Wife? No wife. Sir? A woman, to be sure. My mother. My patron. I will ask no more. I know thee not, John Wilby. Thy music telleth me who thou art, and sayest not what thou desirest. My lady, Mary, were we to stray with my desire, nor words nor music could afford us rescue. Then let us stray no further, or let befall what may befall.
as if it had been years, not weeks. Would that it had been years. Would that it still could be. We needs must live for that thought. I love thee, John Wilby. Music and love are close companions. Would that thy love for me had kindled ere thy senses had been ravished by my songs. Would that thou wouldst believe mine eyes were open ere were mine ears and thy sweet music is delightful counterpoint. Then I love thee, Mary. I will attend him. <laughs> Be sure the servant goeth with thee. I will. And on. Naught to fear. <laughs> Still a bed, John. 
still warm from company. We expected thee last night. The journey was hard. I stayed at the inn. How long wilt thou be with us? It's one day and night. I am much employed and must return to Denmark. Thou art permitted to travel. I am so treasured by the Danish king that I may stray at will. Not so treasured that I may expect remuneration while I do so. And thus I am in need of thy good offices. My eyes are ever sharp and I am at thy service. Here be the first ten of the second book of heirs. The rest will follow from Denmark. When thou hast them carefully perused, they must to Thomas East. I shall with my lord and lady Kitson to Austin Friars come spring, and Fleet Street is hard by. I shall myself deliver the manuscript. It will be occasion to extract from Master East money's due for my own book. <laughs> and all is settled. Let me show thee my wares. Ah! We dine simply with family this night. Will you join us, Master Dowden? And Master Wilby, too. Good food and a warm bed will more than satisfy this weary traveller. Sir Thomas, I thank you. Since the fare is simple and will keep a while, will you please us with a song? Such is your reputation. I doubt me not we shall delight in your skill. I shall sing for my supper, if that be your custom. Come again, sweet love doth now invite Thy graces that refrain To do me due delight To see, to hear, to touch, to kiss, to die With thee again in sweetest sympathy to see, to hear, to touch, to kiss, to die with thee again in sweetest sympathy. Come again, that I may cease to mourn through thy unkind disdain. For now left and forlorn I sit, I sigh, I weep, I faint, I die In deadly pain and endless misery I sit, I sigh, I weep, I faint, I die in deadly pain and endless misery. For the night my sleeps are full of dreams, my eyes are full of streams, my heart takes no delight to see the fruits and joys and sorrows. was not me to speak of it in company last night, but thou shouldst know the contents of this letter. It containeth words from a friend of mine at court, which much disquiet me. Lord Darcy's patience with his wife is quite exhausted. He accuseth our Mary of unbecoming flirtations, if not downright adultery. They live apart. Would he divorce her? I know not his intention, but Darcy hath much influence at court. There are many there who wish us ill. 
Mary's dalliance with Master Wilby doth no harm while it remaineth here within these walls. And it keepeth others too from his inseamed bed. You comprehend me? I understand. Thou wouldst that Wilby went hence away. No, I wish him to stay. He hath value and some genius still to gild our family name. No, no, no. Mary must hence away. She hath a house at Colchester, let her to it. Darcy then can to her or not, but he cannot accuse her if she liveth modestly with their children. John Wilby may sorrow, but let that be advantage to his melancholic ditties. Maybe that I have played my part in this. John may well conceive that Mary lay with Dowland last night. What well, says that? He may think the worst of her, and thus the best of thy decision. <laughs> Wife, I understand thee not. Nor needst thou. But thou must speak with Mary. She must leave today. And Dowland must travel with her. Thus all may be resolved in this matter. farm is thine, I hope it will bring thee prosperity. Words of thanks will not suffice. And are not needed. Since my husband's death, thy music hath brought me such solace. And thy help in other matters leaveth me indebted to thee. This is some small payment. Thinkest thou of my daughter? I think on her, but do not harp on it. 
she writeth to me from time to time. And do you answer? The letters remain unopened. That book is closed. Doth she prosper? In truth she doth. As do the children. Then all's well. Yes. All's well. Age hath o'ertained me, and left me dry as bone. But thou, John... Art yet young, my lady, and await my turn for love. So, Master Willby, her ladyship rewardeth ye, but I know not what. She is kind and generous. Indeed. And you, from servant to yeoman to gentleman, best be mindful ye remember your true station, methinks. Lady Arbella Stewart. I know that name. Uh, Lady Mary's sister, Margaret, married Lady Arbella's uncle, Sir Charles Cavendish. To whom I dedicated my first book of madrigals. She is a handsome woman. With a head full of fine thoughts to match her beauty, they say. Mind a head she nearly lost. How so? She was in line to the late Queen's throne. Some say she laboured too hard to take it. But since she is cousin to King James, she is yet safe, I trow. <laughs> John, ah, thy duty to Lady Arbella Stewart. Her ladyship is on a progress and will sojourn with us here this night. Master John Wilby is a valued member of our household and composer of some distinction. I have taken much pleasure in singing your music with my uncle. You compose with uncommon feeling. My lady is generous. Perhaps you would be pleased to sing from Master Wilby's latest miscellany after we have dined tonight. If you'll pardon my voice of a corncrake. Will you be my teacher ere we dine, Master Wilby? Jar. My voice is not a corncrake, but a night jar. Rather a nightingale, my lady. So you charm the bird from the tree. Where learned you this facility? Here, where I have dwelt these fifteen years past. Your wife dwells here with you? No wife have I, nor am likely to have. And I know husband. Pretty pair. Methinks your ladyship cannot want for suitors. The suitors who would meet my wants could never meet my needs. I do not breathe. I think. 
Comest I here, John? Thou knowest well. Of thy own free will. Will is want. Is want a... Not so. Want may be need, and I the happy provider. Still the gentleman. Indeed more tender than most gentlemen. But not gentry. One day perhaps. But never nobility. And there's the rub. We are not star-crossed, as the playwright says. Our paths have crossed and we have found brief solace. I must away on the morrow. Then brief indeed. The nightjar singeth yet for hours to come. Then draw on sweet night. Must away ere the house is awake. In truth, a fleeting dream. That is so, but remember me. There can be no doubt. And dedicate thy new miscellany to me. If Lady Elizabeth hath no objection, when I am restored at court, I can make much of thy talent. I thank thee for that. For all. No thanks. Only shared joy. Oh, and John, I need to must tell thee I encountered the Lady Mary at Austin Friars this last month. On hearing of my intention to visit Hengrave, she bade me give you this, with instructions that thou must open it in my presence. Night was a dream we take not with us and share with no one. Wish me good fortune. Fortune, I need. 
The house will be closed up after two months in accordance with her ladyship's decree. Well, you will surely go to your farm with all the rich gifts she gave you. I know not yet what I shall do, Master Lindell. What shall you do? I was not so well provided for by Lady Elizabeth, but I will endeavour to live a decent life with what I have. If her ladyship provided well for me, then I provided much for her. I carry no guilt. And let us part the wiser. So thy mistress is dead. She will be missed. Ah, indeed, sir. But I am here to humbly beg thy pardon, George. I heard of Anne's death and, to my shame, made no move to comfort thee. It is of no matter. Not so, it is of great matter. The cause of my remissness was the frailty that overcame the Lady Elizabeth. Then that was good cause. Did Anne? Was she? At peace. With God, if not herself. She cried out for thee in her last delirium. George, I swear. You have no cause. I have oft thought that ye had once joined in intimacy. If not in love, it is past, John. I hold no rancor. Then thou art a far better man than I. Not better. But perchance easier in my soul. And at last, easier with thy gifts, which I confess for too long cast a shadow. My gifts are such as blow away in any small ill wind. <laughs> then we are as one. I compose no more, nor shall do. But thy position? Is of church warden at St. Mary's this last year. But what of thee? Wilt thou be a yeoman farmer? I know not. I must first make a journey. To Colchester. How knowest thou this? My ears have oft told me what my eyes witnessed when first thou met her. Go now, John. Break the ties whilst thou still hast time. I shall miss thee, but I do not expect to see thee again in this life. John. Forgive me, I should have sent word. No. By the time I had word of my mother's death, she was in the ground. She died at peace. 
seemingly. And thou? I have my farm, my gifts. But I do not have thee, Mary. So I am here, happy to be here, content to let the past be the past. What sayest? Dowland, your departure in haste. Dowland? You lay with him the night before you left. John, this were madness. My mother locked me in my room. Else I would have come to thee as I had ever done for six months. Oh, dear God. She wanted you to think this thing. The reason you ignored my letters, my pleadings. What's to be done? No hatred. We have so little time. Wilt thou stay with me? I am not of thy rank. Then be my guest, my teacher, my dearest friend, my deepest love. All these years, John, all these years. Never go back to Hengrave. Swear thou wilt never go back. I swear. Love is our gift, John. We still have some small part of life to share. Every day. Every day will. Silent peace.